Do hormones cause breast cancer? Let's find out. There's a recent study published by The Lancet that implicates menopausal hormone therapy or hormones taking during menopause for more than five years can increase the risk of women developing breast cancer. It's interesting and we need to explore it a little bit more because it's not what it seems. First of all, all these women were using synthetic hormone replacement therapy. Bioidentical hormone replacement therapy was not considered. Second, the increase in breast cancer rates were slight, not absolute and by association only, meaning that women who were using menopausal hormone replacement therapy were more likely to be getting regular mammograms, which may or may not be a good thing in the sense that more early breast cancers that may have never become life-threatening cancers were diagnosed. So these women given menopausal hormone therapy were followed up a little more closely than those women who never took hormones during menopause and who might have had undiagnosed early breast cancers that resolved on their own. And yes, it's possible. That's what your immune system is supposed to do. It's supposed to seek out and destroy wayward cancer cells. This large study was retrospective over 25 years, but did not account for other factors like genetics and toxicity exposure, nor the women's lifestyles. It did account for women's weight though. The association of obesity in menopause with increased risk of breast cancer is very well known. And it was found that leaner women who had used menopausal hormone replacement therapy had an increased risk of developing breast cancer when they used estrogen alone but obese women do not. And that's because women who are overweight have so much body fat in menopause start storing enough estrogen that their fat cells can feed an existing tumor. And that's really the key. These hormones do not cause breast cancer. They feed tumors. Estrogen is a growth hormone. And in this particular study, none of these women were taking real progesterone. They were all taking synthetic progestin or estrogen alone. Now, synthetic progestin does not protect you against breast cancer and other types of cancers except endometrial cancer, like natural progesterone can. It can't possibly. It's derived from testosterone and it's not even the same molecule as natural progesterone. Interestingly enough, they found in the women who took both the progestin and the estrogen had the most increased risk of breast cancer. Huh, 20 years ago. I sat on the local advisory panel for the Women's Health Initiative Study. As an integrative nurse practitioner, I was one of the endocrine advisors. I was on a panel with an endocrinologist, a gynecologist, and a cardiologist. Yes, a cardiologist, because the Women's Health Initiative Study really was looking to see if hormone replacement therapy could actually improve cardiovascular disease. And at that time, I knew based on my research and my clinical practice that taking hormones orally by mouth can increase the risk of blood clots that increase the risk of stroke and heart attack. And so I told them so. Three years later, they closed the study because too many women were having issues with blood clots, heart disease, and stroke. And by 2005, they closed the progestin arm of the study because too many women were having issues with breast cancer. Again, while I was sitting on the panel, I explained to the women who were listening, they wanted to see what the women's health advisors had. I told them they're not using progesterone, they're using a synthetic progestin, which could not protect them from cancer like natural progesterone can. They were using oral conjugated estrogen from pregnant mare's urine, also known as Premarin. So they were not going to be seeing the results they really, really were looking for, not with that combination. In fact, they would be putting these women at risk. They didn't listen until some women got hurt. So what are the alternatives to using synthetic menopausal hormone replacement therapy? Well, there's a few. First and foremost, not all estrogens are created equally. Pregnant mare's urine, Premarin, are conjugated estrones that are converted by your liver into the most dangerous type 4-hydroxylestrone, which is carcinogenic. Now granted, not all the women in the Women's Health Initiative study or all the women in the Large Lancet retrospective study develop breast cancer. In fact, the risk rose from 6 to 8%, which is only a couple percentages higher than if they didn't take any menopausal hormone replacement therapy at all. But there are other factors here. Lifestyle factors and genetics influence breast cancer. Still, Premarin is not the safest form of estrogen for menopausal hormone therapy. And number two, 
Using a progestin rather than natural progesterone has been proven to increase your risk of many diseases, including breast cancer. Now, if you have some choices and you choose hormone replacement therapy during menopause, you can use natural bioidentical progesterone and bioidentical estriol. Estriol is a safer form of estrogen replacement therapy than conjugated estrogens. Now, estradiol is the most potent form of estrogen, but it's short acting and it gets converted into estrone by your fat cells. You can control that and the type of estrogen you make by making sure that you keep your weight under control, that you're physically active and not sedentary, that you exercise moderately, that you're eating fatty fish for those omega-3, specifically the EPA, and that you're consuming flax ligands and DIM either as a supplement or in the form of lots of cruciferous vegetables. And you only drink alcohol in moderation. And you get enough sleep. These are the things under your control and will help you metabolize your estrogen, both what you make naturally and what you might be taking as menopausal hormone replacement therapy. And adding estriol to estradiol can help protect you because estriol has both pro-estrogen effects and anti-estrogen effects. The way it works is the two stronger estrogens, estradiol and estrone, stimulate the alpha receptor of estrogen, while estriol uses the beta receptor. The alpha receptor is what stimulates growth and the beta receptors calm things down. While estradiol is key for your brain staying healthy, for your heart and blood vessels staying healthy, and for your skin and collagen staying healthy, estriol will help mitigate the effects of estradiol. So estriol is a safer alternative. Plus, I love using estriol vaginal cream as the best hormone to get the vagina healthy. And by the way, the Lancet study showed that using vaginal estrogen cream, even the synthetic forms of it, did not increase your risk for breast cancer. Now, the third thing you can do, which I believe is the most important thing, is to support your hypothalamus through perimenopause and into menopause. Your hypothalamus controls all of your hormones, all your sex hormones, estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, your adrenal hormones, your thyroid hormones, your insulin metabolism. It controls your sleep cycles, your body temperature, your weight set point. It literally controls how fast your metabolism is. Your hypothalamus controls your immune system as well as the neurotransmitters that control your moods, your memory, your concentration, your ability to focus. So it is vitally important during hormonal transitions to support your hypothalamus. Otherwise, you're going to have to take a lot of hormone replacement therapy to get the same effect as you would if you would have supported your hypothalamus. These are super difficult decisions to make. What I find is women need support. So I created a hormone support group. It's private and you get access through my free hormone reboot training. That way you get the support you need to make these decisions about hormone replacement therapy. Of course, talk with your healthcare provider. But after the publication of this study, they're going to be really hesitant to prescribe hormone replacement therapy. And sometimes your healthcare provider has trouble even recognizing the symptoms of perimenopause or recommends Band-Aid therapy, like drugs, like antidepressants. Breast cancer is a very scary thing. You have control. You have control over the choices you make, especially over your lifestyle choices. What you eat, how active you are, how much alcohol you drink, how much toxins you expose yourself to, how well you support your body with vital nutrients, and specifically your hypothalamus. It's up to you and it has more of an effect on your breast cancer risk than menopausal hormone therapy. I'll see you in the next video.